We praise God for our youth and young adult choir today. Come on and give it up for them. Come on, praise God for them. We praise God for our ministry of music, Sister Jasmine Chambers, amen. Come on, praise God for her. She is releasing the worship leader that's in her every day. Come on, give God praise for her in the house. We bless God for our super smooth worship leader, Brother Kenny Mickens II. Amen. Praise God for him. Our deacons are digging us. And I want to give a special shout out to our youth ushers. Can we praise God for them? Amen. Y'all were singing. And I, I, I'm just praying I can preach as good as y'all were singing today. But there is on this Pentecost Sunday, a Sunday where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here's the word. I'll try not to be before you long, but there is indeed a word from the Lord. I would, I would encourage you in your quiet time to read Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 and all of Romans chapter 8 for the balance of what we're going to preach. But I just want to read into your hearing uh, that verse 5, verse 8 of chapter 1 in Acts, and then verse 11 and verses 15 and 16 of chapter 8 of the book of Romans. The Acts scripture, you will find these words. For John, truly baptized with water, you shall receive, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then verse 8, for you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Turn quickly, if you will, to Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and then verses 15 and 16. But if, or since, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. Somebody say, in you, in you. Verse 15 and 16, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are indeed children of God. Amen. I'd like to talk to you from our sermon series, the Why Series, part three. We're asking the question, why the Holy Spirit? And, but, but, but you really want to ask another question, y'all. Are you fueled for the journey? Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you fueled for the journey? To tell you, ask your other neighbor, are you fueled for the, de- for the journey? Let, let, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you because you still reign over our circumstance, <laughs> giving us chance after chance. Father, we love you this morning, and we come on this celebration of Pentecost Sunday, uh, the truth about the Holy Spirit, please teach us that again, that he may fill us and show us Jesus Christ, our Savior. Father, help this preacher to preach, help your people to hear, and help us all to know and grow and be more like you, is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, these are some tough times, y'all, and and uh, uh, things are hard. Listen, it's almost like... Uh, 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 sister, cousin Vicky, that we're back in the seventies. The gas shortages, right? Amen. Uh, put my first uh, slide up in the first picture up, if you will. Uh, have y'all heard about Colonial Pipeline? It's one of the nation's largest gasoline providers, and it had to halt its whole system. Five thousand miles of pipeline because they were hit with a ransomware attack. Amen. If you don't know what ransomware is, it's a computer virus that locks up your files until you pay a ransom. Amen. The virus shut down all of their pipelines. And and listen, Colonial Pipeline carries about 45% of the energy that goes to the East Coast. 
I mean, uh, it, it caused gas lines and prices going up all around the country. Amen. People were going crazy, buying a, a panic, buying, watch this, y'all, even putting gas in plastic bags. Amen. We, they showed us how dependent we are on oil and gas to fuel our cars, our airplanes, and everything we need to get us to the places that we need to go. And watch this, y'all, because we know once we are out of fuel, the journey is over. In the same way, y'all, many of us find out that the road of life, Sister Beverly, gets, gets, gets rough. The road of life gets winding, more confusing, pandemic, financial, and social problems. And sooner or later, we're going to run out of you. Amen? And that's if we depend on our strength or depend on the strength of other people. Oh, but the good news, y'all, y'all ready? God has provided a never-ending, ever-flowing fountain of supernatural power in the person of the Holy Spirit. If you're fueled by the Holy Spirit, give God a praise in the house. God, we're continuing our sermon series, the Why Series. Don't say why, Pastor. The focus of the series is to solidify why this church, why the church, especially Solid Rock, does and believes and functions the way it does. Despite the earthly problems we're facing, beloved, we will never understand why or make it through to victory unless we understand that there's power in the essential and the eternal doctrines of Jesus Christ. See, can I help y'all? Everything in the world may change. Everything in the world may be shaken. But I'm so glad I can stand on. I'm so glad I can rely on. I'm so glad I can lean on. I can so glad I can rest on the promises of God. Is there anybody here that's standing on the promises of God? You ought to give him praise. I'm standing on this thing. See, we looked at why the cross was so important, how Jesus sacrificed blood and death is essential, personal, and is eternal. And we discover why the resurrection is important to us, amen? If Christ isn't risen from the grave, then all our hopes are gone for this life, and our hopes are gone for the next. We won't even have hope for our own resurrection, amen? Faith in a crucified and risen Savior is a priority, the validity, and y'all remember this word, veracity. Yeah. It is that word again. And a necessity for the hope, listen, y'all, that the world can't give and the world can't take away. As believers in Christ, we have a sure and steadfast hope that no matter what our situation is, because the one we hope for is alive and he reigns over everything, we have hope forevermore. I'm hoping in Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less. Somebody said he's a South Rock. So today on this Pentecost Sunday, we're asking why the Holy Spirit. As we're few, y'all, Pentecost Sunday is the day we celebrate the fulfillment of the Old Testament feast days that took place 50 days after the Jewish Passover. But watch this, y'all. On this day, 10 days after Jesus had risen from the grave, uh, showing his glorified body to his disciples, amen, uh, and ascending to the Father, the Holy Spirit came down and flooded the church and flooded the world and still floods the church today with power. Somebody say power. The Holy Spirit is not it. He is a he, the third person of the Godhead who is as much God as God the Father is and Jesus the Son is. And he fills the earth, and watch this, y'all, fills every believer who has trusted Jesus for salvation. I don't know about you, but I can feel him moving. Can't you feel Jesus moving? I can feel him moving in this place. Watch this, y'all. When you praise the Lord, you can really feel him moving. Y'all must not want to move in the spirit. If when you praise the Lord, you can feel him moving. Reverend Dr. Felicia taught us a few weeks ago how the power walks in the spirit. 
And I want to discover why we need the Holy Spirit, y'all, to fully live out this Christian life. So I want to look at two portions of the New Testament. One, the book of Acts, where the promise and the power is given to the early disciples. Watch this, y'all. It changed them from fearful followers into warriors and witnesses for Jesus. And then, two, I want to look at the book of Romans. Amen. Paul's letters to the church in Rome. It changed them. Watch this, y'all. From people in different cultures uh, 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 who are not fully understanding their newfound faith in Christ to ones who will better understand the scriptures, better understand the spirit and the power he has in our lives so they can be fueled and we can be fueled for the journey. I tell your neighbor, fill us up, Pastor. All right, y'all ready? So let's go. Watch it, y'all. Here it is. From Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, the Spirit is the promise from the Word of God. Amen. It's Luke's gospel, or the sequel to Luke's gospel. Acts is a history book of the New Testament. It shows the acts of the apostles and the acts of the Holy Spirit. Acts shows us that once the disciples fully saw Jesus, once they fully received the Holy Spirit, nothing could stop them. Amen. They were unstoppable. And he showed how the church... Uh, uh, watch this, y'all. It showed how when they got the gospel, listen, y'all, it, it thrilled them. When they got the gospel and when they got the spirit, it moved them. It changed them. Oh, come on, y'all. Doesn't Jesus Christ move you? Hasn't Jesus Christ changed you? And when you think about him, doesn't he thrill you? So see, here it is. To understand Acts right, you got to understand his history. It is descriptive of what happened, but not prescriptive for the church today. What I mean by that is everything in the book of Acts has a general application for us, but it's not how the Holy Spirit moves or works in the church on a day-to-day basis. Got it? And see, how we see how the Spirit works on a day-to-day basis is in the epistles, which we'll talk about later. So here's Jesus. Listen, showing his glorified body appearing, as Luke says, through many infallible proofs that he is indeed alive, giving them the great commission to take the gospel around the world and make disciples, but he doesn't send them out until they receive the promised power. See, in order for you to get the Spirit, you don't have to have a bunch of elders laying hands on you Praying and slobbering and speaking in tongues, saying yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do. You don't need that. Because the moment you receive the gospel, you receive the promise. The moment you believe, you receive. Somebody tweet that. When you believe, you receive. Amen. So Jesus tells them to wait. Somebody say, wait. On the glorious initial entrance of the Holy Spirit that God, oh God, promised to pour out on all flesh. That means, listen, in the Greek or in the the Philly vernacular, all flesh means everybody. And that's the promise from Joel chapter 2 to pull out. Put, put the spirit on all flesh. Listen, for everybody, young people, old people, men, women, says, listen, young folk, you, listen, when you get saved, you don't get a little teeny tiny happy meal version of the Holy Spirit. Listen, God biggie sides of the spirit just like for us, amen? Amen. And see, watch this, y'all. And when you receive the spirit of the living God, amen, you become more than a conqueror. You become a believer. You become an achiever. You can't be blocked and you can't be stopped. I wish I had some spirit-filled believers that know who they are in Christ and would give him. See, a few days ago, y'all, Friday's payday, uh, uh, Dignity's Eula, right? And so uh, I like to order out on Friday payday. Oh, Kirsten, oh. So I ordered six fried chicken wings, some mac and cheese, some collard greens, some crawdaddies, some Uber Eats. I got a text message, y'all. We received your order. 
We received your payment, and we're contacting a driver to bring you your six chicken wings, your matching cheese, and your collard greens. I started, I felt the Holy Ghost show. I was dancing, y'all. But then I got another text a few minutes later. Thomas, we're very sorry. There was a problem with your order. And we got to cancel it. Did you have anything to do with that? And we're going to return your money. I'm not sure if they did that yet, but... But my point is, the world can promise you some things. People can promise you some things, but they won't always deliver. But if God promises to send you the Holy Spirit of power, you can stand on that promise, walk in that promise, live in that promise, and be a witness for God. Because the word sets up. I mean, you can trust the Spirit to guide you and lead you even when your world's falling apart. See, see, here it is, y'all. The first point is that the Spirit is the promise from the Word of God. Here it is in Acts chapter 1, verse 68. The Spirit powers our witness for God. Disciples have seen Jesus. He's risen, right? They watched Jesus in his glorified body walk through walls, Sister Deborah. They watched him appear and reappear, right? They looked at him. They handled his body. They saw the marks in his hands, the marks in his feet. They saw the spear in his side. Amen. They fed, fed him a fried fish sandwich on, uh, in Jerusalem. Amen. I'm trying to help you all. It's always good to feed the preacher. Always, always. You get a blessing when you do that. They saw these things with their very own eyes. Yet Jesus waits, tells them to wait to receive the power so they can be witnesses. Y'all catch that? They saw some things, but Jesus tells them, don't witness until you get the power. And watch this, y'all. The power is not to restore Israel. The power is not to take over the world. Listen, the power is not to correct all the social ills in this nation. The power is not to name and claim your new car, your new house, or your new husband. It's not the power for that. The power is to stand before people in an age that hates our Savior, that doesn't want to submit to any authority, the people who want to do their own thing, the people who will will kill you, torture you, murder you, and stand before them without fear and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's good preaching, y'all. And so he tells them, you need this power to take it to all Jerusalem, that's Harrisburg, all Judea, the commonwealth of Pennsylvania, all Samaria, the United States of America, and literally, somebody say it, all around the world. See, see, beloved, I've been in church for a little while. See, see, I've been in church for a while. I've been been saved for a while. I've been in church. I've been blessed to be in the ministry for 20 years, y'all, 20 years. And I've been, listen, 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 listen. I've been blessed to be a pastor for almost seven years. And, and, and I've been blessed to watch the lives of people who are spirit-filled folk. Can, can I talk about a couple of them? Uh, Deacon John Ross, spirit-filled man, amen? De- Deacon Ken Webster, right? Deacon, Deacon Mel Johnson, amen? Look, look, Deaconess Beulah Chambers and, and, and her husband, Deacon Ray Chambers Sr. These folks have been witnesses as to what it looks like when the Spirit of God controls the heart of an ordinary man or woman. And God's calling us to be witnesses as well. Hey, listen, can I help y'all? There may be someone here saying, I heard what you're saying, Pastor. I haven't been a, a, a faithful witness like that. Amen? I haven't, I haven't been always faithful. 
I got some cracks in my armor. I got some chinks in my armor. I got some instability in my walls. Amen. Can I help you all say help us, Pastor? You may not be a faithful witness like that, but you can stand and be a forgiving witness and tell somebody I may have made some mistakes. I may have gotten into some relationships I regret. I may have been in prison. I may have done drugs. I may have lied and cheated. I may have had a failed marriage or two. I may have had some abortions. I may have jacked up my finances. But I can stand before you today as a witness to God that God will save, God will heal, God will forgive, God will restore, and God will set you free. If you're a witness of Jesus Christ, of a forgiven soul, give God praise in the house of God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm a witness of what God can do. I'm a witness that God can turn you around. I'm a witness. Oh, I know saying, we're all witnesses about you, brother. <laughs> you mess up a perfectly good sermon. The Spirit's promise fulfills the word. The Spirit's power fuels our witness. And that's turned over to Romans chapter 8 because the Spirit's presence fuels our walk. See, as we turn from history in the book of Acts to the practice of the church in Romans, See, can I tell you all about Romans? This letter was written by the Apostle Paul to the early church in Rome. This was a church that was not started with specific apostolic leadership. Or in other words, they were just a group of people who heard the gospel, believed in Jesus Christ, were spirit-filled, and decided to start a church, a new church, in their area. Let me try this over here. Can I try it over here? They were, you were, there was a group of people who believed the gospel, filled with the spirit, loved Jesus Christ, and wanted to start and build a new church in their area. That sounds like some people that I know. All right, y'all. And see, the church, or Paul wanted to visit this church, but he couldn't. So he wrote a letter, right? A letter that contains as much Christian doctrine as he could think of. Amen? Uh, it tells us like 16 chapters of, of Christian doctrine that tells us, watch this, tells us why we need to be saved. It tells us, amen, who our Savior is. And it tells us, amen, how we can be saved. And watch this, listen, say Amen. How we're supposed to live once we get saved. In chapter 7, Paul gets real about even though he's saved, he still has struggles. Okay. I wish more people would be real about the struggle instead of faking a funk before God and everybody else. Pretending we always got it together. But Paul says in chapter 8, there is now, someone say now. Oh, y'all like it. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So let's get to verse 11 of chapter 8. Paul lays out a distinction between people in the world. Can, can I pause here? Don't hate your pastor. Can I pause, pause here? In the world and in the United States, we create distinctions between folks. Barriers and walls between the races, right? Political views, financial status, and now even gender. And people are, celebrities are pushing genders, new genders. There are even folks who are saying, I'm not a woman or a man. I'm not a he or a she. I'm a they or a them. Can I give you all the Greek word for, for that type of thought? Can I give it to you? Baloney. Can I give it to you? <laughs> Trying to help you all. God has already set the genders in the beginning. 
making man and woman in his own image, he created them. He hasn't changed it, and he ain't going to change it. Biologically, physiologically, and more important, scripturally, there are only two genders, male and female. And beloved, there is a your medical field, Sister Virginia, beloved, there is a sure fire way you can find out which gender you are. And that's all I'm going to say <laughs> about that. But if you're struggling in these areas, if you're struggling with your identity, you need to know that God loves you. He has compassion for you. And he'll provide help for you if you ask him. But Paul here makes a spiritual distinction. Between all the people in the world, watch this, y'all. There are only those who have believed the gospel and have been born again, walking in his life-giving spirit. And those who have rejected Christ, walking by their flesh and by the spirit of the world or the devil. In other words, Chris, there are folks who are the walking dead on the highway to hell toward death. And there are those who are fueled by the spirit of God who are on the highway to heaven. Toward everlasting life. Can I ask you a question? Are you ready for the question? Oh, here it is. Can you tell which highway you're on? Let me help you. Look at your life. Look at how you're living. How are you spending your time? Is it on lustful pleasures? Idolatry, jealousy, outbursts of anger, pride, and selfish ambition. Watch this, y'all. Drunkenness and wild parties. And other stuff, then you are on the highway to hell. Oh, but if your walk is fueled by the Spirit, you're on the highway to heaven, where there's, Kenny, where there is, you, just, you said it today, where there's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Renee, 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 the folks on the highway to heaven, they're walking, oh, come on, y'all, they're walking up the king's highway. They have the joy of knowing which way they're going, walking up the king's highway. And Renee, when you have that joy walking up the king's highway, you can walk through the hell of this world. Come on, y'all. Walking, talking, singing, shouting, 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 shouting. Anybody here walking up the king's highway, you ought to be shouting, 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 shouting. Your life might be dark right now, but if you're walking on the king's highway, Mother Betty, my, my, my road gets lighter. My load gets lighter. My, my road gets brighter. Come on and give God praise if you're walking on the king. Highway and fuel by the Spirit of God. Watch this, y'all. The Spirit of God is a promise fulfilled in the Word. It's the power that fuels our witness, right? It is also, uh, his, his presence fuels our walk, but here it is, the last point. The Spirit's person fuels our work. Romans 8, 14 to 16. Right, see, young people, y'all say, I know this is new Sunday, and I, I know I'm supposed to try to be relatable to y'all. Amen. But, but I want to help, the, I wanna, I wanna help the, old, the old heads, the, the OGs. So, so y'all going to have to hold on. Watch this, y'all. Y'all young people may not know about this. There was a TV show that had a story about the worth of people in a family. Can I tell it? You want me to tell it, Renee? You ready? Here's a story about, about a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold like their mother. The youngest one in curls. It's the story of a man named Brayton who was busy with three boys of his own. There were four men living all together, but they were all alone. Here's the good part. But the one day when the lady met this fellow, and they knew there was much more than a hunch, that this group must somehow form a family. And that's the way they all became? The who? The who? The, the 
That's the way they all became. You see, the girls were so loved by Tom Brady, or is it Mike Brady? Okay, Mike Brady. They were so loved by Mike Brady. Oh, come on, y'all. They were all adopted into the Brady family. And the girls with all, had all the rights and privileges as the other Brady kids. They were living apart, different names. But when it came together, the names were changed. And they came under the Brady name and got all the privileges and the blessings that came with being a Brady. Come on, y'all. They had an intimacy, watch this, y'all, of not calling Mike Brady Mr. Mike or Mr. Brady. They had a privilege of calling him Dad, signifying the intimacy that he had with them and they had with him. I'm going to have to come get y'all. Y'all feel like y'all, y'all, y'all ain't with me. See, we were all in Satan's family. But when Jesus came and adopted us, filled us with his spirit, he, we became part of the Jesus bunch with the privilege I'm not calling God the omnipotent ruler of the universe, but calling him Abba, Father. And the Abba in Aramaic translates to Daddy, to Poppy, to Pop Pop, indicating where we can go to our God and ask him for everything that we need. signifies a closeness with the Father. Now, hear me right. Hear me right. Y'all listen to amen. Your salvation is not based on emotional feelings. All right? Salvation is based, Sister Connie, on your belief in the person and work of Jesus Christ. But, but there's a spirit of adoption. See, see, I'm glad I serve a God that I can feel every now and then. Every now and then the Spirit of God will move and let you know that despite what you're going through, you're still his child. Okay, let, all right, let me, let me help y'all. See, here's how it works. When my life is low and people are calling me everything but a child of God, when I get or my family gets a bad doctor's report and they don't know what to do and it looks like there's no hope, when there's no money in the bank and bills are due, when a loved one I pray for to be healed passes away and go on, goes on to be with the Lord, when the devil tries to discourage me and tells me I'm not worth a quarter, the Spirit of God moves and lets me know that no matter what happens, I'm still a child of God, that nothing can separate me from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus. Are there any adopted folks in the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church? You ought to give God praise. In order to keep the spirit moving, you got to stay in prayer, stay in the word, oh, beloved, and stay in church, stay connected to people with the same spirit you have, and you can remind each other that we're still children of God, and he is able. All right, let me, let me close this sermon out where I started. I told you about the Colonial Pipeline. The fuel distributions were shut down because of a cyber attack. And the perpetrators, watch this, y'all, demanded a $5 million ransom so things could get back in order. Watch this, y'all. A $5 million ransom so that the fuel power can start flowing again. See, see the people, they, they tried their technology 
Colonial Pipeline tried their science. They tried, watch this, y'all, tried to fix it on their own, but they couldn't do it. So they had, listen, no choice but to pay the ransom. No choice but to pay the $5 million to get the fuel, to get the power flowing again. There was a ransom. They tried everything they could do, but the ransom, Jasmine, had to be paid in order to get the fuel flowing again. If they could fix it themselves, they would. But despite everything they tried, they needed a ransom or their business would fail and the people wouldn't get the power that they need. See, beloved, we were in sin <laughs> without power, without hope, without the power to save God, without the power to, 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 to even save ourselves. There was a high ransom. But God, in his love, paid the ransom. So the power, the fuel can keep flowing. He shed his blood to pay it. He died on the cross to pay it. He was buried in the grave to pay it. And he rose from the grave on the third day to let us know the ransom is paid in full. Now the power of the Spirit flows freely to everyone who believes and everyone who asks for it. Why the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus thought we were worth dying for. He thought we, we were worth saving. He thought we were worth keeping. He died for us to free us, make us whole, and to live like him. Moment of silence. Jazz, play a little bit of words for me. Can you do it? Moment of silence, y'all. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the blessing of your Holy Spirit. We recognize the cost that brought him to us. Our Father, we thank you for it. We ask you to refill us again anew. Let your spirit convict and guide those who need to be saved today. Help us to be witnesses of your great gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the deacons take their places, as they come for the invitation, I want everyone standing, every heart praying. Come on, everyone standing. And y'all help the pastor sing this today. Come on, help the pastor sing it. Remind yourself and remind somebody that you are worth saving. Amen. Keeping. Amen. Can you all help me? Choir, can you help me sing it? Come on, y'all. Help the pastor sing it. Come on, y'all. Tell 
softly. Everyone praying. Again, there's only two types of people in the world. Those who have been saved and have the Spirit of God and those who do not. You really don't have to guess which side you're on because you already know. We told you in this word. And the offer is, listen, I'm going to let you know, Jesus Christ thought you were worth saving and keeping. That he died on the cross to give you, to, for, to make, listen, to make you born again by his spirit and be identified, verified, justified as a child of God. If you want to get off the wrong road and get on the right road by accepting Jesus Christ, if you're here, pray a prayer like this. If you're watching online, pray a prayer like this. Father, I know I'm not saved. I know I'm not your child. But I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. That he rose from the grave according to the scriptures. And I believe that he did that for me. And I receive him as my savior today. Thank you for saving me. I give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed something like that and you're in the building, or you want to pray something like that, Step out of any aisle, come down to the front of the church, and get saved today. Be a child of God today. Or maybe you know God, and we, you got off the wrong, to the wrong road. That happens. Listen, you can rededicate. You can pray a prayer like this. If you want to rededicate, pray this. Father God, I'm sorry. I went the wrong way for a while, and now I want to come back home. Thank you for receiving me and forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you want to rededicate, if you want to rededicate, step out in any aisle and let us know about it. We would love to help have you be reconnected with your father. Or put rededicate in the chat. Put saved in the chat. Or maybe you're looking for a church home. Listen, this is the place, this is the church where you can be encouraged, where you can, you can know that the Spirit of God lives here. There are Spirit-filled people who will help you in your walk with God. If God's moving you to join Solid Rock, step out in any aisle, come down to the front of the church, and we will make you a member today. Or, if you're watching online, put SRMBC in the chat. We'll be in touch with you today. Father God, I want to pray today that your spirit will move, convict, and convert someone who needs to make a decision today. We thank you. If it's not today, make it be tonight or tomorrow, but move in Jesus' name. Amen. So I can be free, so I can be whole, and I can tell. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sacrifice your life so I could be.